Welcome to the NRT Now podcast, giving you the latest in Christian music news, topics, and artist interviews directly from the largest Christian music site online, newreleasetoday.com. Now, here's your host, Jake. Hey, what's up, everybody? Hey, we are on episode 23. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't already, please make sure that you subscribe, follow, you know, whichever platform you're on right now, whatever they call it. I think they all have their own name for it. So uh, just make sure that you hit that button there so you know when a new episode's coming out because we have a lot to share with you. And I know it's been a, f- a little bit longer than normal since we've had an episode out, but that's just because we're getting ready for what's next. And I don't know, let's talk about what's next. We're making a couple changes to the podcast here. Uh, one of them is we are shortening the episode lengths just a little bit. We're aiming for about the 20, 25, 30 minute range. And that allows us to go to a weekly release date. So we're a little bit shorter and we are now weekly. So awesome. So we have more interviews. We have more conversations with all the artists that you love here. So we're very excited for that. So one of the other things along with that being weekly is we're on our Instagram page. We're doing what we call wallpaper Wednesdays and it's a lot of fun. Uh, we have quotes from quotes or you know lyrics from the artists that we're talking with, and it, it's a phone wallpaper. And so there's a little bit more to it than that. Tag us back on our Instagram page, and I don't know some cool stuff happens. Magic happens in the background somewhere, and tags happen. There's a bunch of Instagrammy stuff that happens on the back end. But uh, head over to our Instagram page, you know, at New Release Today and find out more about that it's it's a lot of fun so one of the other things that happened was you know i got to go to memphis tennessee divisible music college an awesome campus by the way and i got to be a part of the together we love award show where we announced all the winners for you know all the we love awards that you guys have been voting on and we had over twenty thousand votes which is incredible so you know thank everybody for voting i mean it just it makes it awesome for for us to see and for the artists to see just the support that they have in that, you know, got to be a part of the live show, got to just hang out with all the artists that were there for the live performance and just the atmosphere that we had about celebrating Christian music. And it was, it was just amazing. And just all the effort and all the work that everybody from, you know, the NRT team put in all the planning that Kevin, our founder, president and all around, good guy put into this all the people from visible music all the work that the artists put in it just turned out to be you know an absolutely incredible event so it is still on youtube it is still on facebook and i'll link that in the description here so if you didn't get a chance to see what happened please go take a look it was it was awesome or if you were able to be a part of that you know go watch it again because it was awesome Uh, How many times can I say awesome in this podcast? Probably more than that. Um, But part of that whole process, I got to sit down and chat with all the artists that were there for the live award show there. Because I was trying to figure out what order I wanted to put these in and what, how I wanted to release all of this here. Right before I really made my schedule, Meredith Andrews, our host for the evening, and, you know, she did a live performance as well. She put out a Facebook post that I think really sums it up. Well, let's actually, let's read this here. So she said, something really special happens when we choose to champion and celebrate one another instead of giving into the comparison trap. I'm continually amazed by the unique expressions of the father's nature displayed so beautifully through each of his kids. And seeing the broad scope of how the divine demonstrates himself through humanity makes me want to jump out of my skin and cheer wildly from the sidelines. Each of us get to carry and steward the very spirit of God in our own individual way. And there's absolutely space for us all. These are just some of my thoughts after getting to host the We Love Christian Music Awards put on by New Release Today earlier this week. And as part of NRT, and I think Kevin would agree with me here, and all of our NRT team, that that's really our heart for the awards that we give. We all love Christian music, and that's why we named it the We Love Awards, or I'm assuming that's that's the explanation that I'm running with. We like to celebrate what happens in Christian music across the year. And it's not about saying who's the best or whatever. We give an award because it celebrates the accomplishments, but 
you know, that's not the end all be all. It's about, like I said, the celebration. So I really love that Meredith caught on to kind of what our heart is, you know, that our heart was transferred to, you know, the artists that were there. So I decided to have Meredith lead off our series of conversations that we had at the Together We Loves. You know, as we intro, you'll hear that, you know, continuing on, I had conversations with all the artists all right in a row. So we may get a little jumbled here and there with that. There'll probably be a lot of continuing as it comes through. But yeah, we'll we'll start with Meredith. And after having the chance to sit down with Meredith, man, I'm in awe of her heart for worship and all that. And one of my, should I say, bucket list items now is to lead a couple of worship songs with her. You know, Strong God and Spirit of the Living God. And I know that'll never happen, but, you know, a fellow can dream. So, but just her heart, her voice, her heart, all that, um, I was just absolutely blown away, you know, after finally getting to see her live. So, you know, let's uh, hear from Meredith. Continuing on the Together We Love, and I, I think I've got this right twice so far, <laughs> um, the Together We Love episode series, we've got Meredith Andrews, and she is also a host for tonight. Yeah, that's right. I know. So you've been talking a lot today. I'm going to be talking a lot tonight. I'll probably be tired of the sound of my voice by the end of this day, <laughs> but so excited to be here. We're excited to have you as a host this year, and I agree, it is going to be a blast. Yeah, for so, sure. And you're performing tonight as well. Yep, that's so the plan. pulling double duty. I guess so. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how Kevin talked to you into that, but here we are. I, here we are. I know. I think the thing that I'm most nervous about is walking around in high heels all night. I'm just hoping I don't, like, you know, bust it on the stage. But, hey, if I do, it'll make for a good show. <laughs> all right I, I don't remember the last time i walked in high heels so i have oh, no right. frame of yeah. reference for that you <laughs> oh, know i'm not probably a good yeah. thing i'll take your word for that okay good good <laughs> you were with vertical for a while yeah and so now you're on your own you're working with the belonging but before we get to that let's yeah. push pause on that okay. and let's go back a little bit further sure. if i understand correct you are from north carolina that's right yep and i understand that your family was Foster, yes. am I right? That's you are right. So yes. actually, I confess I cheated a little bit. I was yeah. listening to a podcast <laughs> interview with uh, okay. Josh McCabe yeah, uh, a little cool. while back. Awesome. So you know, walk us through just kind of how you got started down this path, and just kind of tell us a little bit about your story of music or, or the foster care or all of it. I, I talk about this a lot. You know, what I love about Christian music is mm-hmm. that you know it's not just kind of songs and just out there yeah. for the plays. You know, there's yeah. A ministry behind yeah, that totally, so totally you know so the foster family you know coming from that kind of environment definitely shapes your, your ministry which yes. kind of expresses through the music so absolutely we yeah. want we want the story yeah okay well I, yeah like you said I grew up in a little town in North Carolina and my parents became foster parents when I was about eight years old and I was the only child and I was basically begging them on a daily basis for a sibling you know because all my best friends had <laughs> brothers and sisters and I, I wanted one too at least one and then they yeah, they became foster parents. We had about 20 kids live with us over, I think, a four-year time period. And four of those became my brothers. Uh, three of those, excuse me. It definitely shaped my journey because when I went off to college, I had this desire to work in orphanages overseas specifically. I went to Guatemala my freshman year and just fell in love with these kids at this orphanage. Thought I was going to move there because I kept going back um, during the time I was at Liberty. And the Lord called me to Chicago instead. But there's also there's there's always been this like this layer, this foundation of desire to help people that maybe have a harder background, um, especially in other countries. I don't know, um, especially like Latin American countries. And so that was kind of like a big part of my life, you know, growing up. And I started writing songs when I was 12. And then, you know, of course, my first song had six verses and no chorus because you have to start somewhere. (laughs) Hymn style. What? Hymn style. It was definitely like I thought I was a modern day hymn writer, I (laughs) guess. But I, I don't know. But yeah, I think just throughout the years, God has just taken me on this journey of understanding and and even just getting a deeper revelation of his love for me. And then that just translates into loving other people, you know, the way that I've been loved. And I think that it's definitely where 
songs have come from as I've been on this journey with Jesus and he's revealing more and more of his heart to me because you know when I was in college I remember being interviewed by this newspaper in Virginia and I was rereading it a couple years after and I had said something like yeah I write songs because of you know it's like one of the ways that I pursue God and it's just like this expression to him which is true but as I've gotten older I've realized that the reason the real reason why I write songs is because God has never stopped pursuing me. Like my mm. pursuit of him is sporadic at best, but he is consistently, constantly, lovingly, relentlessly pursuing my heart. And when I get a revelation of that, when I get a glimpse of what that looks like and what that means for my life, it changes everything. And so that's what informs my songwriting. And I go, no, I have I have something to write about because I've seen God pursue me when I was running the other way. I've seen God pursue me when I was walking through um, loss, grief, heartache, just feeling misunderstood or overlooked. And I've seen God be, again, consistent. And so that's where, you know, songs come from. That was maybe more than you bargained for in just the first answer to the first <laughs> question. But that's kind of just a snapshot of, of what it's looked like in my life. Well, I mean, that's great. I mean, that's... Part of what you know, I love about worship, especially, is you know, just working through you know just that concept. And, yeah. You know, I think the worship genre really lends itself to that kind of. Is it introspection or that sounds like a good big word? No, like no. I, well, but, absolutely, I think it starts there, and it has a level of vulnerability, but also surrender. You know, but that's yeah. all introspective. But I think you then you point it. Up. Worship is a response to just seeing who God is in your life and who just what he's done for you. And so it's just this, uh, I'm responding and I'm giving him my worship. I'm giving him my life. I'm giving him my surrender because he's worthy of it. And I love really that foster mentality or, you know, kind of that perspective is the word I'm looking for. Yeah. That's kind of a physical on earth manifestation. Right. You know, you kind of see that parallel of what God does. And, yeah. You know, that's kind of from the outside in, I should say. My little girl has been at begging for a brother or sister and yeah. we thought it was kind of, eh, and then here we go. <laughs> All right. of a sudden we have another kid. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Your, your family went the foster route. We yeah. decided to have another kid apparently. And yeah. here we are. That's awesome. But yeah, how has that kind of shaped where you've gone, you know, kind of that perspective of, you know, just loving other kids, yeah. you know, and kind of taking them in as part of the family. Yeah. I, when I was a kid, I think um, early on, the Lord really showed me his heart for people, especially for the ones that maybe society had rejected or marginalized or just tossed aside. And I'm so thankful for the experiences that I had, just my parents being foster parents and having the opportunity to just see through the eyes of Jesus and in, in the way that he has compassion, so much compassion for people, so much compassion for these kids who had endured more in their short lifespans than I ever have in my entire life, you know, whether it was abuse or neglect or just seeing things, experiencing things that no child should ever have to experience. And yet knowing that in there, like they're still kids and they still... Yeah deserve a childhood and they still deserve to know that they are so loved and that God has a perfect plan for their lives, regardless of how it started, regardless of anything hurtful or difficult that they had endured. And it was just, I think it just opened my eyes to see that there are so many people in the world that need to know that they're loved. And I don't know, I, I never want to operate from thinking like, I've got it all together or even feeling entitled or ungrateful. I always want to be aware of people in wherever they are, you know, their struggles, their journeys, their ups and downs in life and just going, God, how do I love people well? How do I love them the way that you love them? And so I'm really, I think, very fortunate and blessed to have had that experience even as a kid yeah. that opened my eyes to the compassion of Jesus and the compassion that he invites us into that we get to then pour out on other people around us. And so you graduated from Liberty. I did. Let's let's just clarify that you went to Liberty and graduated from I, yes, Liberty. Yes, yes. I was there for <laughs> I was there for four years, graduated in four years, but stuck around an extra year because I just love being yeah. there. I found a lot of community and I feel like I really matured there and grew up there in a lot of ways. God taught me so much in my time at Liberty. 
And so then you went off to Chicago. I did. With Vertical Church. Yep. Which I didn't realize that I had heard you before uh-huh. until I started digging a little bit into the vertical church yeah. and some of the vertical worship and all that. Yep. I'm like, oh, that's that's why the voice sounds familiar. Yeah, for sure. I know it gets yeah. a little confusing for people, but I um, I actually signed a record deal about a year after I moved to Chicago. And so I was doing things on my own kind of as a solo artist and um, opening up for tours and um, but then also leading worship at church uh, half the year as well or over half the year. So it was kind of both and. So I had this artist career, but I was also leading worship with Vertical and Vertical really actually wasn't launched until I think maybe 2010, 2011. And so I had already been doing things on my own before yeah. then, uh, mm-hmm. but vertical kind of launched me into the more of the worship space versus the CCM space, which I've always right. been a worship leader. I've always identified just kind of as I love to lead worship. I just, from the beginning, had a hard time writing corporate worship songs. Yeah. So I grew in that. Like all my songs before were more like singer songwriter and introspective, just to bring yeah. that word back <laughs> again. Um, yeah. And then I've just surrounded myself with people who write songs for the church and have learned and grown from them. Yeah, in preparation for this, one of my favorites, um, I always go back to a strong God. Yeah. I mean, that is one of my favorites. And from a guitar player's perspective, like, oh my gosh, <laughs> like a song that's just not swells. Sure, and, you sure. know, like I learned about that, you know, being involved in the worship team at my church. Right. You know, that was one of the audition songs. And yeah. We play that every once in a while. Very and cool. Yeah, what, in preparation for this one, I kind of started going back to that. I kind of rabbit trailed through some old music videos kind of from that era. Right. And it just launched a awesome, you know, rabbit trail from, yeah. you know, was that five years ago, give or take? Yeah. I don't remember. <laughs> if you would have told me it was that last year. Strong God, oh man, it was probably 2012, I think. Yeah, somewhere 2013. in 2013, yeah. And so, you know, kind of, it was, it was just an awesome kind of trip back down memory lane as I was yeah. kind of going back down that. And, and the just the music video of that one as well, that was a... Just the visual impact sure. of that as well is it, it turns into one of my worship jams. That's awesome! That I, I, I love, love that. Digging back into that, so. amazing. At the time, at, uh, vertical. Now mm-hmm. words fail me. I <laughs> use one big word, and then all of a sudden it's gone. <laughs> like, dude, I, I totally understand. You, you used your quota, dude. I like, know exactly. <laughs> I get it. How did? What was your biggest uh, avenue of growth at vertical? You know, kind of going from the college kid to yeah. You know, now you're at a church, leading right. worship, your day to day. Yeah. You know, kind of what what was that kind of step between where you're yeah, at? Now? Yeah, yeah. Um, my time with Vertical was very grounding. I had amazing community there, uh, accountability, friends who were very intentional with me and my husband Jacob. And so I just say that that was kind of the season where God just established this foundation for us. Because I think maybe there can be this perception that artists that move to Nashville, all of a sudden they have no community or no, which isn't necessarily true either. But for me being at Harvest and being part of Vertical, it just laid this beautiful foundation for us just to go like, okay, this is ministry. We're not looking for some kind of illusion of a Christian celebrity. We're not after radio hits we're not like that's not the goal if those things happen we'll address them as they come but the goal is to actually be faithful in what God has called us to the goal is to um, do the thing that God has put in our hand to do currently to be faithful stewards of that to do it well to love people well again and to dig deep wells you know I think one of the things that God said to me early on was don't concern yourself with the breadth with how this is going out horizontally and, and the reach that you have. You concern yourself with the depth. You go deeper into my word, deeper into my presence, find yourself consistently with me and let me teach you what it's like just to be in in my presence and listening to my voice and chasing after my heart. Let that be your goal. Let that be the the end goal and everything else that comes, you know, we'll navigate it as it does. And so just being a part of vertical, I think for me and, and for my husband was just really uh, again, just grounding, laying that foundation, understanding like we are part of the body of Christ. We love the local church and we love getting to lead worship from that place and for the same people on a consistent basis, knowing their stories, knowing what they're going through and still seeing them worship God, even in spite of the hardships that they're facing. And so that was just a really incredible time. You know, with that, now you're in Nashville yeah. you're with a belonging company quite a bit. You have your own thing going now. Yeah. Well, not now, but yeah, you know, Continuing, still. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, right verbs. Is that a verb? 
Um, I don't know. We're we're done with English. (laughs) (laughs) You know, so now, now we're at, how is that translated into where you're at? You know, we've heard a little bit about the belonging, uh, you know, that it's a Tuesday night, if I remember right. A lot. We do have a Tuesday night, but we also have Sunday services too. It started as only Tuesday to kind of, um, cater to artists and band members that were on the road on the weekends and couldn't make it to church and therefore didn't really have any community. So Nashville is a very transient culture because there are so many people that leave on the weekends and, you know, or they'll leave on a Wednesday night, come back on a Monday morning. So the belonging has, I think, beautifully facilitated an environment and a space where people can come off the road and find like-minded people and just find their people, you know? So, yeah, we've been a part of the belonging for, I think, four years now and um, have grown so much there. It's different, you know, being part of the belonging because with Vertical, we were actually on staff at the church. And with the belonging, we just volunteer once or twice a month. But they're still very plugged in and love what God is doing through that community. So has that grounding from vertical just really helped you be a better worship leader, be a better member of that community at the belonging, which, yeah. you know, like you said, is that still that transient. Yeah. Uh, I think Danny Goki goes there sometime, you know? Yeah. I mean, it's, yeah, we have so many people that just ended up there, you know, that everybody's like, how are all these people at one church? But you know, Nashville is just an interesting place and, and yeah. unique place in that regard. Um, but yeah, Carrie Job, Natalie Grant, uh, Danny Goki, Melinda Doolittle, all these people that are going out on the road, Sarah Reeves, you know, on a regular basis, but we call the belonging home and it just fuels what we do. We get poor, into there and then we're able to go out and even see people experience the presence of God and and, and worship in deeper ways I believe even just because of what God is doing in that house at the belonging yeah. and I think one of the things that has happened for me is it's just elevated my worship being at the belonging what I love about our church is that we are just we want one thing and that is the manifest presence of God yeah. to show up every time and he does when we ask him to when we show up when we open our hands and our hearts and say God would do whatever you want to do here today then that's yeah. exactly what he does and so we've just seen incredible moves of God we've seen people healed we've seen people saved we've seen people just um go like i was so burned out on religion and now i have this relationship with god because i know he's real and he's tangible and he's with me every moment of every day and it's just incredible to see what he's doing and not just in the belonging but everywhere in his the the big c church i love that you know the the big c yes i imagine you know being able to be there but you also get to traveling and worship you know at other you know little c churches you know just being able to get that perspective as well and just you know taking that across the country. Yeah, it's amazing. I I pinch myself on a regular basis, just in the sense that I get to travel and see what God is doing all across the board in his body and how much he loves his bride and how much he's, how he's speaking the same things and how he's awakening people's hearts um, where they're just tired of doing same old, same old. They're not, they're not there for a program. They're there for the presence of God. And it's just incredible. I like the, the concept of the belonging as an outsider, Yeah, Yeah. you know, just a bunch of the artists, you know, Christian artists that we hear, you know, on the radio or wherever. And, you know, from the Danny Gokies that wins awards out the wazoo to, you know, the the up and comers, you know, and it's just kind of that common goal. It's not about being on stage or it's not about, you know, having to worship, but kind of lead, you know, and all that. It's getting that moment to fit and to fuel up and right. to just worship themselves without any of those strings attached. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And it's just, you know, it feels like home. When you talk about the belonging, like it does feel like a place where you can belong. Nobody's looking at your, your talents or your stuff or whatever. It's just, you come as you are and it's home. Well, I'm really looking forward to hearing you this afternoon. Uh, hosting and you know pulling all all the duties yeah i'm excited i'm honored to be here i'm looking forward to tonight it's gonna be good so do you have your fitbit on counting the getting your count i don't have a fit i don't have a fitbit i never had a fitbit maybe i should invest in one well tonight would be the night to see how many you can go how many steps can i walk in those heels without falling on my face (laughs) (laughs) It's like okay. there should be like a placard, like this many days, right. this many steps without a fall know, on there you go. Exactly. Awesome. Well, we're we're really looking forward to it. This will be on YouTube later you know, after the live event. So, you know, cool. if you didn't get the chance or if you did get the chance, rewatch it. So awesome. we're excited. Sounds good. Thanks for having yeah. me.